Alright, now we're ready. This is day two, LA Barstow to Vegas, 2022. If you haven't seen day one, go check it out. Day two is significantly longer than day one. This year, doing all the hard ways was 235 miles. So my plan was to sync up the audio in post, and it kind of worked, but kind of hard to find one little audio clip in 8 or 10 hours of uh, audio files, so synced up what I could. Still trying to get the perfect audio is proving to be difficult. This dirt section was nothing special. It is nice that it's right off the hotel, so you can hit the dirt right away and warm up. But other than that, nothing to write home about. It's not very long. Same as last year. After that, it's a quick ride through downtown Barstow. Obligatory bridge shot. the second dirt road. Been on this road many times. This is for sure we're going to Calico. This road can be really fun in the early when the sun's just coming up and there's dust everywhere. It's so hard to see. Crazy hard to see. Because this road a lot of it is directly into the sun. First washout hazard of the day.
confirms this year, I think. Maybe the same, I don't know. I think every year I think it's rougher. Here we are at the legendary Calico Steps. You can think of this as the gatekeeper to the Calico Trail. If you can get past this, you're pretty much home free. One year, a guy in a BMW GS fell off the cliff to the right, and it was quite an ordeal to get the bike out. That video is somewhere on YouTube. Don't know if I could find it again. And another year, Brian looped his bike and smashed his radiator, and that ended his ride. All right, now we gotta go up this thing. Oh. Whoa. The struggle is real. I took the struggle bus through there. The struggle bus, like the short bus, except that this is a bus where you struggle. So after I got up that hill, I decided to pull my bike over to the left by this boulder to get it out of the way of the bikes behind me. And uh, somehow I got the bike hung up on this boulder. I'm all... My God. I'm regressing. Couldn't talk. What took so long? What the fuck? Dude, I went through the worst ever. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of made my path as I went. I probably didn't pick the best route, but did you see me go through it? No, the camera did though. It was so fast you didn't notice. You couldn't see me. I kept getting hung up and then I got hung up again. Oh, dude, it was terrible. You didn't drop it, did you? No, almost though. So you probably wasted a bunch of unnecessary energy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I struggled up that. And then once you're struggling, it's just, it's like, it feeds upon itself and you start struggling more. You start to go downhill when you, and then you lose your confidence a little bit. And then... Yeah, it was, it was bad. And then you're fucked. All right. <laughs> But 
this is why you should go through Calico. It's so cool looking. After Calico, it opens up to these faster, sandy, flowing sections. Maybe that guy just went down, but that's a bad place to stop the dust and the glare of the sun. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've done that. I pulled up on people thinking they were you for a second. Yeah, it's like if your brain, your brain will just put the shape together and you'll just think it's your brain. Well, I'll just look at one thing like a white helmet and I'm like, oh, that's fine. Meanwhile, this is like a whole thing with other bags. Almost a gallon. Wow. Yeah, so I'll just it. This is a fast, fun section. There's only a few areas where the sand gets kind of deep.
believe straight is the easy way, and if you turn right, that takes you the hard way through the wash. This right turn is really easy to miss. I always think of this fence as the official entrance into the wash. I thought it was called Afghan Canyon Wash, but I believe it's called Mannix Wash. first time you go through this wash, it will seem endless. But now that we've done this a bunch of times, I thoroughly enjoy this section. This is the wash that oh, gives a lot of people a lot of problems. What I mean is people who are doing this ride for the first time or new riders who aren't very good in the sand, this wash will make you reconsider your life choices. Look at that. Only took eight years for Brian to start waiting for me. He is clearly not impressed with my pace. I did find out months after this ride that my rear suspension on the Beta was set horribly low and uh, the shocks weren't set well. The front shocks were, uh, the settings were way off. So John went through my suspension and the bike rides much, much better than it did during this ride. trying to say here is there is lots of bowling ball size rocks and if you did fall and landed on one it could really hurt so that kind of makes you wary of, of sections like this end of the wash section. And once you go under the railroad tracks, if you go right, it'll take you to F10 wash, which is a water crossing. But this year, that was not on the route. <laughs> oh, oh. You alright? <laughs> Yeah, if you're moving at all, it's like really hard to hear you. It's the fucking wind, it's just unbearable. But, uh, that one? 
these guys doing pretty good on the big bike, so. Yeah, I was, I was watching them. So now what we do is we go across the 15, and then we just take pretty much that. we did last time. That dirt. See if this is on still. Oh, it is. We take the, just that awful dirt road to Baker, so. Okay. Unless you want to get on the freeway and skip all that. Whatever. Don't. <laughs> Garbage or boring? That's the curve I wiped out on right there, I think. I don't know about laying down with your head on a curb like that, but I guess that guy found it comfortable. And here we go, stolen car number one. Place your bets if we see a second or a third. So this section had a couple obstacles that could uh, take you out if you weren't paying attention like this washout right there. Right. After doing this ride a bunch of times, I have to say this section from here to Baker is probably my least favorite. It's just long and rough. Yeah, there's a couple sections like this where you can cruise along pretty good, but so much of it is just extremely rough and it's not very scenic. And it's just, if there was a section to skip, this is it right here. That diagonal telephone pole would almost certainly take you out if you didn't see it. The desert starts to look a little better as you get closer to Baker. That's Baker ahead in the distance right there. Let's go in here and check in if there is a check in. Yeah, check one. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as it's been in the past. Yeah, there's just a couple areas that I was like, this is shit. The razors have actually made parts of it better. Yeah. Some parts worse, but there's a lot of washouts though that could catch you. I just was like, should I wait? But there's so many people, like groups of people I was passing. I was like, fuck, if I wait, we'll have to deal with that dust maybe. I didn't know. I didn't have really any dust at all. I only had dust when a couple people passed me. And then that would only last five minutes and then they'd slowly pull away from me and then I wouldn't see them again. Yeah. 
we're earlier than last year because we're in the shade right now. Oh yeah. What do you want me to grab? Just whatever, like, there's a bag of, of pretzels. We spent less than 10 minutes gassing up and eating snacks in Baker. Lunch is technically at Sandy Valley, and Sandy Valley is a long, long ways away from Baker, especially this year's route. It's crazy far to go still. We do a fair number of rides from Las Vegas to Baker throughout the year, so I'm very familiar with this section of the desert, and I generally enjoy this area. I recommend you limit your stops and taking breaks to an absolute minimum when doing this ride. I'm not really a fan of leaving at dark 30. I prefer to leave right when the sun is peeking up over the mountain but we typically leave a little past that because we're, we're not morning people, I guess. But we make up for it by almost never taking breaks unless we have to. This 360 camera has made me notice a few things I never noticed before. I've been through this pass dozens of times and I never noticed that there was a house off in the distance there. Another thing I noticed when I was reviewing the footage and framing the shot was uh, I saw the guy's motorcycle but I was trying to figure out where the hell the rider is. Oh there he is, up on top of the mountain. What's going on up there dude? I wonder what else I didn't notice. Maybe a UFO flew over my head during the ride. but. I'm not going to go back and stare at 16 hours of footage looking at the sky. I don't know yet. You want to go the hard way? Wow. We'll decide when we get there. Of course we're going to take the hard way. We always take the hard way. I don't even know why we debate not taking the hard way unless we're completely out of time. We had nice clear air here until you guys showed up. Yep. <laughs> They're eventually going to ban these events because of air pollution. Yep, soon. They're getting at us real quick. They're putting these little micro wilderness areas all over the place. And what they're doing, they're sealing off the, the open area. Because you can't cross the wilderness in a motorized vehicle. Oh, that's bullshit. And then in the center, you've got hundreds of square miles of, um, of riding area that they've completely blocked off. Yeah. So you guys going hard way or easy? Hard. Yeah. Go. Thank you.
So the first year we did this ride was 2015. And that was the year that they had this Kingston wash. And this is the first time I've done Kingston wash since then. And you just gotta cross this valley and then head to the rear to the right and we'll be on top of some elevated railroad tracks. Ryan is being so good this year, making sure we don't get completely separated. This section right here can be very confusing the first time you come through here because there's lots of trails and there's lots of washes and some of them run parallel and some of them run just a little bit at an angle. So it's kind of confusing the first time, but once you know the general direction you need to be going, uh, it makes it a lot easier the following years. Oh yeah, this is like our first or second year. So now we're at the elevated railroad tracks I was talking about, or there used to be railroad tracks on this. And uh, this section is super fun. You only get on, get to ride on the upper part for a little bit, and then there's a washout, and you gotta get off it, get back on. And this happens a lot, but it's really cool. And uh, I highly recommend you try this section. I did not notice during the ride. Also on this section, there's some dangerous washouts, so you got to be on the lookout for that. Definitely don't ride faster than you can see, meaning don't charge into somebody's dust. big pipes were no match for the flash flooding that occurs around here. I think at this point, we'd be getting close to Sandy Valley, but we're not even close.
Why is that? Brian said he told the guy that he's waiting for a slow friend and they said he's lucky that he has a friend which is true by the way no but this is typical for how long we stop for which is not very long sure that's Dumont Dunes off into the distance. This is about as close as we came to the dunes on this year's ride. Shortly after this we veered to the right and went into Kingston Wash. Unfortunately my camera died and so this next scene here is when I stopped to replace the battery. There are other good videos this year of showing LABTV 2022 people going through Kingston Wash. It's a really cool wash. I thoroughly enjoyed going through there. And uh, it's very long. It almost feels like the first wash. But since I knew what to expect and I'm a much better rider it was uh it was just great Good. getting close to Sandy Valley. Stolen car number two. Ready? I take a quick look at the GPS confirming this is the road they want us to take into Sandy Valley. Sandy Valley. Now we are officially at lunch. Although I believe it's around two o'clock right now. Like I can't decide. What do I take off for? My gloves, my helmet, my fucking nail you got. Did you call them names for that? No, oh, I just you know, I got a I got a gas shower. That's cool. And then what do you say? <laughs> we don't need it anymore, anyways. We're just going to Rocky Gap Road now. So. Uh, do we have time? Yeah, we'll go the easy way. And just go straight to Rocky Gap Road. What is it? 216. Like feels a lot heavier the second day. <laughs> you want to trade? No. 
I think your suspension is so fucked up, I wouldn't like it at all. I would die on your bike. This is way too low. Because the rear brake. When you're riding it, it's like... Oh, this is gone. Yeah. Oh, well. It's like, it's really low. It's like, I think it's not in the right position in the shock body, you know? I think so. I think you're right. Because you, you're going, you'd go way faster over stuff if it was set up right. I think so. I think it just catapults me. So I feel like I can't go fast. Yeah. After a quick lunch, we leave Sandy Valley. Our plan is to take the most direct route directly to Rocky Gap Road. I believe there's a hard section we could have taken to get to Rocky Gap Road. That would have added a little time, but I don't know that we would have made it. We probably would have made it, but it probably would have been pretty dark as we were going through Rocky Gap Road. Hello, photographer dude. You know you're on the wrong side of the road. You could have been on the other side of the road and wouldn't have been eating dust in your camera gear. I think I want to do the blue over to the green. Yeah, I gotta see. I gotta go 20 feet and see. Real quick. was being really weird it was acting like it was almost gonna rain it was breezy it was pretty cold After a short blast on the freeway, we make it to Lovell Canyon Road. Some years the organizers have a hard section where you turn right down this wash just past the sign. This year, the hard section was entering Level Canyon Road from the other side. The way we came, it was about 8 to 10 miles before we got to the turnoff for Rocky Gap Road. Using the roll chart or the or GPS? GPS. Well, we've done this a bunch of times. And there's like a, a big hill that they, that takes you right up there, but I get, we might have passed it. Is this the hard section? Yeah. Okay. This is uh, Rocky Gap Road. It's not really that hard. Yeah, um, that <laughs> well, that's true, but there is one big rock section. And it, you can kind of walk it through there. It's only like 100 feet long or 200 feet long. So that's a bit pretty easy. And it's very scenic, you know, it's kind of worth it if you're here, quite frankly. I mean, I know this is a little bit of a handful to get to that one section though, so. I'm tempted. Do, it's, do you, any idea what section it is? Uh, no, I don't know, because I don't have the roll chart, but, uh... No worries. Yeah, you you just have to walk it through the little rocky section, and, uh, that's, it's only, it's not very long, though, the rest of it's just nice and scenic, so it's... Yeah, it looks awesome, actually. It is, it's really, this is, like, one of the best parts of the ride, so... If you get to the rocky section and it's too much, you could always come back, that's about 20 minutes, I guess, but... So, and it, and it's not very long. You can like walk it and, and see how bad it is. It's it's only like a couple hundred yards at the most. So, 
See ya. the first sign you'll see when you're on Rocky Gap Road and in a short distance you'll come across the second sign and then only a thousand feet or so past that is when you get to the really the only hard rock section on this route. thing that really makes this section harder than it really is is you're just so tired especially on years when you've ridden through Kingston Wash The best way to get through this stuff is to force yourself to stand and just ride through it, but when you're tired like I am, you can just paddle through it and kind of pick your way through it. It's not too hard. got a little stuck on this rock here but my camera switched uh, files halfway through so thank you camera from saving the embarrassment you can see another guy went down right there fell over again I'm sure he was just exhausted Just like that, we're done with the hard section. Everything after this is downhill. 
figuratively and literally. I don't care how you get back, I'll just follow you. Oh, I almost fell over. Yeah, that is a funny <laughs> I didn't realize there was, it was inclining that way. I think Yeah. I did it twice. Once on the DRZ, once on this. When I was on my driveway, I just... I got on it and just tipped over. I thought the tip stand was down or something. <laughs> yeah, I did that on my BMW once. I thought the kickstand was down. No, it wasn't. That sucks. It did. It scratched it up. All right. So... That's 2022 LAB to V in the bag. What can we learn from this year's LAB to V? Uh, panicking and starting to jog right before the, the, the ride actually helped. So I can recommend that. Even though it was only a mile each night. That was uh, helpful. Um, could definitely, it could always be in much better riding shape. I kind of struggled on the rocks. So, but I haven't really been riding this year much, so. And I haven't been practicing that kind of terrain, so. And it shows, I think. The only thing that kind of hurt, let's see what hurts. The small of my back was getting pretty sore. And then I'm just kind of overall a little tired. Hands were starting to get a little sore, but surprisingly not too bad. Maybe neck was getting a little sore. Just overall, but nothing in, in specific. So I think that's pretty good. I don't know how this uh, 360 camera is going to look. Hopefully it looks good. Hopefully I can get everything to sync up, the audio and all that, without too much hassle. But with that said, I'm calling this LAB to V 2022 done. Maybe I'll include some footage when we get to the Orleans. We'll see. The light was just right and Red Rock just looked awesome. I checked the time and it's 421 as we're leaving the Red Rock Loop. So I'd say 4 p.m. is probably the absolute latest you'd want to attempt to go through Rocky Gap Road. to the Orleans Casino.
showgirls get in that line? Here, I've got a keychain for you. Okay, what's that for? Uh, it, uh, it's just photos by Grumpy. Okay. And it's just a keychain. Okay. Yeah. Great, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Did I really ask what a keychain is for? Wow, I must be delirious. it another one in the bag it was a great ride we did every hard section except for the one right before rocky gap road and neither of us fell or even had a tip over so that's it until next year talk at you later